Shalom, beloved. A word. I received a lot of emails over a period of time about wayward adult children or wayward children. And I just wanted to give you a word and some encouragement. First of all, for those children who have fallen away from the Most High, who are rejecting you as a parent and rejecting the word, you pray for them. The Lord will love and honor those up to a thousand generations who love and honor him. So first and foremost, your prayers, they are powerful in regard to your children. But I do want to speak on something so that many of you feel as though there's something you did. There's something about you as a parent, be you a mother or father that brought this about, okay? These behaviors of sons and daughters, many of them full-grown adults, okay? I want to speak about the sons of David, of Eli, and of Samuel. I'm going to start with Eli, Hophni and Phineas. Eli, as a father, loved his sons. He rebuked them, but as a judge and a priest, he did not remove them from serving in the tabernacle. They dishonored Yah. Sometimes as a parent, you can love your child too much. And in doing so, you are not truly loving that child, nor are you loving the most high. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Does that mean you don't love your adult child or your child? No. But what it does mean is when you see them in violation and you keep spoiling them or allowing for them to do things that you know they should not do and you support it. Some of us have spoiled our children. Now they're adults and you don't understand the behavior. And no, this isn't a blame thing. This is an explained thing. And that you are not the only parent that's had these experiences or that are having them. A lot of times you feel embarrassed. You feel separated and alone. Sometimes the child's abandoned you. You've been a good parent. You've done all you can. And they abandon you. When we look at David's son, Absalom, yes, we know David was going to be punished by the Most High because what he did with Bathsheba. The Lord took his firstborn child from him that Bathsheba birthed. He told him the sword will not leave your house. Absalom killed Amnon, the oldest of David's sons. But the Lord also told David, I'm not going to take your life. When Absalom started plotting on his father, the Most High did not sanction it. If I'm quoting it correctly, 2 Samuel chapter 2, starting between verse 14 and 17, Absalom is not supported by the Most High. The Most High confused the counsel of the counselor working with Absalom so that he could not prevail against his father. Here's Absalom. He is the most handsome man in all the kingdom. From the soles of his feet to the crown of his head, he was beautiful. He's the son of a king, King David. Even after he killed his brother, his father did not slay him. He banished him for a while, but then he received him back. And in the end, Absalom plots against his father. These are some of the things that children do. Many of us love our children so much, sometimes it's a danger to us. Should you love your child? Of course you should. But some of us, and understand, while Absalom is plotting against his father to take the throne. He's using other Israelites to help him. 
Some are innocent and don't understand the plot of Absalom, but others over time do understand. And you have family members a lot of times because they're jealous, because they can't get that close to the original being a parent. They go after your child to create discord in your household. Yes, they do. And they have a very powerful influence. People that are not that close can't do it. When you look at Absalom, they're Israelites with him. They know David is king, but they're supporting Absalom. And the conspiracy becomes great. Great. When you look at Samuel, here's this great judge. Samuel comes in on the heels of Eli. Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phineas. He lightly rebuked them, but as priest and as judge, Eli at minimum was supposed to remove Hophni and Phineas. They desecrated the temple. They were committing adultery. They're having sex with the women who served at the entrance of the temple. They're dishonoring the sacrifices. They're taking money. But Eli, he let his love for his children keep him from honoring his position with the most high. So much so some of us, you have to be careful. You can love your child to the point that you actually aid their destruction. There's a point where the guidelines come in and you tell them according to what must and must not be done. We are not going past this point. Some of us have children that are drug addicted or that are on, they drink a lot. Some of us in our earlier times, we may have been on drugs and drinking and they try to use it against us to manipulate us. And through guilt, through coercion, we end up allowing for things and we think it's our fault. But you see, we have a God that sits high and looks low below. And he tells us what we should and should not do. If your child, your adult offspring has abandoned you, has turned on you, is against you, Yah is still in power. Like I said, in the case of Absalom, if Israel, some of Israel is helping him, that's family. That's who they are. Sometimes you may have had the household, they had the wife, they had the husband, that you tried to raise your children correctly. So what happens? You get conspirators who? Brothers, sisters that come together and conspire. Why? Because they feel as though, why should you have that home? You and your house doing what you do, but they want to tear it down. And they conspire, they use lies. Absalom was at the gate judging in place of his father without his father's knowledge. And he did it for over 40 years, trying to usurp his father's authority. There were people that knew it, but they didn't tell King David because it benefited them. This conspiracy went on for years before he actually went after his father. When you look at Hophni and Phoenix, because they were not removed. And in reality, many times, they should have been killed according to the law, but his father, their father, Eli being their father, not only did he not remove them, he wouldn't punish them according to what the law required. He wouldn't even remove them from the temple. Sometimes, beloved, even when we have deep love for our children, if you abandon the most high, that same said child trying to spoil them because many parents give them what they want, that's not going to make a child or offspring honor you and you dishonor the most high. But he sees, he knows. He also understands that a lot of times conspirators trying to destroy your family, trying to destroy your marriage, they will support things with your children that are completely opposed to you. 
making that child, that offspring, that adult, they give them what they want. What do I mean? Money, praise. They try, they justify wrong. They don't tell them what the right way is. And this can go on for years. But Yahuwah sees everything. And many times those same said people believe that because it's been going on so long, there's never going to be a punishment. But you see, right before Absalom died, 20,000 in Israel fell. The group that was on Absalom's side, 20,000 of them were killed. And it was because of that rebellion against King David. Many people in our family, they go after our offsprings, our sons, our daughters. How? Telling them what they want to hear, just like the Israelites told Absalom, this is a beautiful child. This is a beautiful man. The punishment was so great. We look in 2 Samuel, at one point, Absalom had three sons and one daughter. His daughter was named Tamar, like his beautiful sister who had been raped. He had three sons and one daughter. But as we go further on in the story, all his children, Absalom's children, end up dead. How do we know that? Because Absalom set up a pillar in his name because he had no male offspring, which means all of them died. When people turn, Yah is not going to bless evil. I don't care how many family members support it. It doesn't matter, beloved. What I would say, you pray for that son. You pray for that daughter. The prayer of a righteous person availeth much, even to the pulling down of strongholds. What stronghold? You know, it's a stronghold to have a great number of conspirators trying to turn or your children, your offspring, your adult sons, your adult daughters, your teenage son, your teenage daughter against you, teaching them they can do what they want to do, when in reality they know that what they are teaching them opposes every good thing you ever put in them. They also know when you don't honor thy father and thy mother, thy days on this earth shall not be long. But a lot of times these conspirators, if you look close, they're normally family members, beloved. No, you are not alone. Mm -mm. They're family members. And it goes on for a long period of time a long period of time to get it in grain, to get a lot of people to buy in and a whole lot of lies or manipulations go on. Eli, he lightly punished Hophni and Phineas, but in the end, when the Lord punished, he took Hophni and Phineas out and told Eli, none of your men will ever have this priest. So they're going to die in the flower of their age. What's that mean when they're young? Then he brings in Samuel. Samuel. Samuel was a true judge. He was a good judge. Samuel had two sons. Samuel taught his sons well. But when Samuel became older and he wanted to pass the judgeship to his two sons as full grown men, they decided to go their own way. The people didn't want them sons. They didn't fear the Lord. And that was when the people asked for a king. And they actually, in asking for a king, through no fault of Samuel, so it doesn't tell you Samuel didn't do what Eli did. He did not neglect teaching them. They were adults when they decided to go their own way, to, to live the way they were living. And the people rejected him because they knew they were not like his father, their father. Loving many of us have sons and daughters. There is nothing. You have done wrong. You could be a Samuel. And they're full grown. They're making their decisions. And they have to answer to the most high. Some of us have become like Eli. And love them too much. To the point that you don't even remove them from a position they don't deserve. But the most high is watching. Others have Absalom's daughters so beautiful, sons so handsome that the family wants them in the position of the parent, but it's not the parents, the, the family's call. 
they got their position from the Most High. David was anointed by Yahuwah. He was given that kingship by Yahuwah. And many people, yes, they will say, well, a lot of that chaos came into David's family because of what he did with Bathsheba. This is true, but let's not get it twisted. Solomon was Bathsheba's son. So the Lord was still blessing David. Sometimes those conspirators, like I said, they can be, people cannot conspire against you, manipulate and misguide you or your children if they're at a distance. They have to be people that get close, that you trust. What I'm telling you, beloved, is the Lord will not abandon you. Some of you have prodigal sons and daughters. But remember, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. Yahuwah sees and he knows, and you are not alone. Many of us, when our children become adults, you have to let them go. You cannot bless a bunch of mess and look for good to come from it. You cannot bless a bunch of mess. You have to let go. Don't walk around depressed. Don't walk around feeling like many of us are being rejected or manipulated and talked about because you are trying to follow the most high. I'm talking about family members that do not live in your house. They don't even spend that much time around you, but because they know you are trying to live right, they are conspirators. They want to creep in and speak to your son or your daughter and oppose what you believe. You see, there's schisms. Remember, two-thirds will not be saved. I'm talking in the house of Yahshua. Two-thirds will not be saved. Some of those two-thirds may be members of your own family, pretending to care, pretending that they're God-fearing. You haven't raised one harmful hand against them, but they support turning your own sons and daughters against you. They support opposing you. If their households were right, they don't have time to come in your household and try to create evil. But remember this, he who sits high and looks low, he knows all things below. Be comforted. You are not alone. It happened with Enoch, Eli. It happened with Samuel. It happened with David. And even though David did what he did, because many people will say, well, Absalom did what he did because of what David did with Bathsheba. But you got to understand something. The Most High was still forgiving and blessing King David. Solomon is the son that was born to David and Bathsheba that took that throne after his father. It was King Solomon. So it wasn't a pure curse running below. Sometimes they are conspirators in your own family. When you look at Hannah, the mother of Samuel, she was the wife of Elkanah. There was another woman, another wife named Panina. Panina had children. There was no reason for Panina to be a grief to Hannah, unless you talk about those in-house people, that jealousy. But she grieved Hannah because Hannah hadn't had children. But the Most High's look, he knows those secret words, those those conspiracies, and he foils them. He will get those people who are plotting evil, he will get them to listen to counselors where he will confuse that counselor's words. Although the one that's conspiring will still believe, beloved. And as far as that wayward daughter, that wayward son, You keep praying and living the way you know to live. Be at peace, beloved. Even if they're gone, if you raised your son or your daughter and they are full grown, you did the best you can do. That's a heavy load to carry a full grown adult around in your head, in your heart, and stress. Where you lose peace, they're not losing peace. You're losing peace. You do the best you can. And when your best doesn't seem good enough, remember he who sits high and looks low and does above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. 
a word. Shalom.